Hello and welcome to another episode of IP Talk Radio. I'm your host, Matthew Smith, and I'm here today with Maya Strella Migotti. Hello, Maya. Hello. So, Maya, we're here today to talk about innovation. The, the word innovation is often overused, um, but what does innovation mean to you? Innovation without profitability, in technology without business mindset, does not serve the greater good of the company. I have seen places where we can be extremely innovating and come out with the best technology, but we don't get the hit on the market or we don't, we don't get money returned for, for this investment. So innovation for me is a focus on improving that what we have now or come out for the new product portfolio expansion of, of what we are doing. Bringing uh, our company, which is, has been always good in innovating and always good in recognizing trends. And I believe we are one of these uh, inclination points where we have to unleash the power of innovation of our people to create our future portfolio for the next 50 billion or Internet of the Things. Ericsson is a very large, long-founded multinational company with employees all around the world. Um, how hard is it really to um, get a cultural change and get innovation at the heart of the culture uh, with such a long-established uh, multinational environment, different nationalities, different working practices and, and time zones? I would say that there are both advantages and disadvantages. So we have to bring them together. Being on uh, many different countries with uh, many different uh, uh, universities and, uh, and the people and, and everything what drives different country forward is actually a fantastic opportunity to actually leverage on, on the strength on the, of what people can bring into that organization and different ecosystems. And at the same time, you have, you have a challenge how to put all this together in, in a fashion, in a manner that everybody will have the same understanding and the same opportunities mm. and, and that all these things can actually brought forward into, into some finally what, what we want to bring some products to the market based on our innovation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one question I'd have uh, at such a point would be, given the um, standardization in the marketplace, telecoms is an incredibly highly standardized market with a, a lot of um, commoditization, if you like, of some parts of the, the marketplace. Um, why is it so necessary for a large vendor like Ericsson to continuously innovate? I would say that uh, to innovate is even more important today than it what used to be before. Because before the world, everything what happened in the telcos in like 20 or 30 years ago was put in the bits and pieces in the standard document and everybody mm -hmm. agreed, we just went and called it in. But then the landscape has changed because today we talk about different ecosystems, ecosystems that were created by big, mighty companies that go their own ways. So I would say the importance of standardization is not the prevailing factor for the winners. Mm -hmm. Actually, standardization is important that we have a global understanding and we can come with end-to-end -end solution and we can come with, with a solution where there'll be men, that will be actually enabling different uh, incomers uh, into the system. But on the top of this standardization, we have to innovate new things. And we have seen that many things have been first innovated and then they became de, fa de facto standard. Mm -hmm. We used to do in telecom, first we sit around the table, we standardize and then we go implement. But we have seen that, especially bringing IT industry in, and now all these different uh, newcomers from the ecosystem, they come with their own parts, and then they become big, and then you know it becomes standard. Yeah. So there are both models are very, very um, uh, alive and very, very valid for today. Mm -hmm. So Meyer, um, why is innovation so important to a company like Ericsson? The dynamic of the market and the changes that we see in our industry is intensifying and uh, innovating and looking how we can do things differently and better with purpose to bring more profitable portfolio 
forward mm -hmm. and continue our leading role in the telecom industry. We have to innovate and we have to increase the speed of how we innovate. We have been always very strong in research mm -hmm. and we are doing that for our prime, uh, prime product portfolio. Uh, we have shown now in Barcelona that we have demonstrated some really fantastic uh, world records in microwave mm -hmm. optical and and uh, we we continue very strongly doing that one. But on top of that, how to get four thousand people in our org in my organization to be enable for them to be innovative, innovative outside of our portfolio, mm -hmm. because we have to look. What more can we do in order to become um, a leader of the future or to recognize different business opportunities? And uh, I would say that uh, organization of 4,000 people, there is a lot of creative thinking that is ongoing over there. How to unleash this thinking? How to bring this idea forward? We have to give opportunity to the people so they will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that means also creating a framework in the organization where people will be recognized and they will be able to do uh, that work. So we do uh, our own program, which we call Ericsson Innova. Mm -hmm. And uh, the program is actually a framework that is deployed throughout our organization. And we have seen that it has been extremely, extremely successful. Maya, you, you've worked for Ericsson in many different countries. Um, you've moved across to Silicon Valley uh, a while back. Is there something special in the water here that, that makes uh, innovation such a part of the day-to-day uh, -day working practice here? Uh, what would you say? First, the whole system here, the ecosystem of Silicon Valley is very much innovation-based. It's a lot of uh, uh, fantastic competencies from best university in the world that came that came here so mm -hmm. we can say this is a cradle of the top talent in our industry mm -hmm. at the same time there is a money and investments that are placed so being part of that ecosystem is our great opportunity to bring into our company some of the top talents and learn from the silicon valley and we are really doing that one we are getting ourselves connected with the top thinking companies with the universities and so on. Mm -hmm. But I would also like to bring um, forward to other places in the world where we have seen that this is happening. Um, I was in China last week and I was totally um, impressed with the amount and the speed how the ecosystem around these smart uh, devices is developing in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, China has been very fast adopter and um, we have seen now there are there are also attempts you know how to bring a various base number of applications that will actually enable this broadband traffic go forward and and uh, if i look at other countries yeah i would say that india probably the yeah. one that is uh, coming with the same pool of talent and so on so it's a great place to be in the silicon valley yeah, and 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 get the best out of it to our company. Excellent, um, Maya. You you talked about top talent, um, so I've got a, a slightly different question for you here. You, you've been um, for the last uh, few years, you've been amongst the highest rated um, female leaders uh, in any type of business um, by one of the Swedish um, press uh, publications. Um, that must be a, a massive honor for you, but. Um, what would you say, how's things changed over the last uh, years that you've been um, growing your own career uh, for women in the workplace in, in this industry? Well, what I have found out that um, the statistics of um, top female leaders here in US or Silicon Valley is not better than what it would be in Sweden. Yeah. Even, actually I would say there is the same same percentage of of how how um, many top leaders in especially in the technical uh, area are females mm -hmm. it's definitely not showing some improvement trends which surprises me i would say that uh, technology is a very exact and concrete place mm -hmm. where 
um, it's very easy to recognize good work and achievement. Your things either work or does not work. Uh, yeah. I remember when I was an engineer or, or a tester, you know, we, if I finish my work on time with the quality and it worked, then it was equally valued like my, my male colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we have a lot of chances, but I think it's um, beyond my, my, my current understanding why there are not more ladies in the, in the technical industry. That's a very good point. Maybe it's down to the, um, the attractiveness or uh, the way that the recruitment happens. I don't know. Uh, it, is, it differs from place to place. Uh, I was very surprised. Uh, in, we have grown a lot in China, in Beijing mm -hmm. and Shanghai. So we have like 1,000 people now working for, uh, for development unit IP in Broadband in, in uh, our new sites. And what I have seen, like 28% of the engineers are uh, young female engineers. Yeah. And in managerial functions, it's almost, in some places, almost 50% are ladies leaders. Wow. So that surprised me. It's, it's more, actually more female leaders percentage than actually what is coming from the, from the employees. What I have seen here in the Silicon Valley, that the percentage of uh, female engineers in, in the units that I have is very low, mm -hmm. which then, of course, if you look at the percentages of the, of the workforce, it's, uh, it's then uh, quite expected that the percentage of the leaders in, you know, technical female leaders is going to be low as well. Yeah. Um, there are countries, for example, like in Spain, in Madrid, in our office in Madrid, 38% of all engineers are females wow. and, and a lot of female, female are taking these studies. So I would say it, it depends on a lot of, you know, on the social moment, on the yep. school, the way how school systems are working with, with, with um, young um, individuals who are choosing technical careers. Excellent. Well, Myra, it's been fascinating talking to you today. So thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you can come back again in the future and talk to us again. Thank you for listening. If you've got any suggestions for future episodes or any other observations, please feel free to email us at iptalkradio at ericsson.com or catch us on Twitter, ericssonip.com.